Well, I didn't expect to be saying this. It's been a bit of a frustrating summer. I found a new empathy for directors of football in FM23 because we've been doing the transfers here ourselves and it hasn't all gone to plan. So let's go and see what's happened in the summer of distillery and start our new campaign at a whole new level. Yes, hello and welcome along to part 18 of Lifting Spirits from Distillery with me, Daniel. We're back for season 3 of our Builder Nation and we'll play our first game today against Annie United. They're the side, of course, who denied Dollingstown promotion by winning in the relegation playoff. So it is the weakest opponent in the league on paper. If you're looking forward to seeing if we can beat them and whether any of our new stars can shine, then please do put a thumbs up on it and subscribe for daily FM23 content. Yes, we've managed to squeeze in an extra day of double uploads. Hopefully you're looking forward to that. And then tomorrow will be two videos as well because we'll be having a look at the mobile game in addition to the next episode of this, which will move to 3.30 where the two stories will rotate each day. But thank you very much for joining me as always. The head coach is in the eye above. If you missed yesterday's, where on earth were you? It was spectacular. And it'd be a two-parter with today, essentially. But we are back for the new season with Distillery. And there's enough action to get on with here. So let's start off the pitch. Because this has basically caused most of our problems this summer. We wanted, as we mentioned at the end of last season, to overhaul the backroom team to improve in certain areas. Hasn't quite gone to plan, if we're being honest, but more importantly than that, it took longer than had been planned. And that meant we had delays to our scouting at the start of the season. We've also had some delays to the coaching at the start of pre-season, and it just all sort of got a bit mixed match at one point. But we've got there in the end, and now we've got a decent team in place. Everyone's recruited, everyone's in. And it's not the big upgrade I was hoping for. I basically released all the staff that were out of contract, assuming that after promotion I'd get better people. What I've actually done is probably got in less good people because our best coach retired, Seamus Heath. And we've also got in people on bigger wages. So it's not worked out on two fronts. But we have got a new director of football. Paul Trainer is that man. He's got very decent judgment. But look at him. If we go back as a coach, I wanted to try and get him signed that way. But it wasn't happening. I don't know why. He's a spectacular coach. He would have been the best at the club, but we weren't able to get him on that sort of deal. The new head of youth development, Connor McAnallen, he is okay. Slightly better than our last one. Same for judging ability, but better at judging potential and a slightly more ambitious personality, but otherwise much of a muchness. Again, a slight upgrade in the goalkeeping coach role, but for the money we're paying, I would have liked better. We've got him in. Ben Moan was the most recent addition, actually. But he's all right. And again, one and a half star, I think, his coaching attributes are, which is the worst of our first team squad. So a short term fix, but an improvement nonetheless. Ollie Mullen came in to replace the retired coach. He's not great mentally, but he's got some decent technical stats. A good defensive coach, an OK fitness coach, which is crucial. And thankfully, he is an improvement on what we were finding in our adverts. Ben Mahaffey is the last coach to come in. He is a 29-year-old, so room to improve. Also good working with youngsters and not bad mentally, but not quite as good as an actual technical coach. So we'll wait and see how he develops. We've got a new physio in as well. Had to pay for him £2,000 from Banbridge, but worth it. A very good physio. And we're going to need that as we start players on contracts and start training more. We've got Connor Wynn, the new chief scout. Eight and six. It's a slight upgrade, but... Not what we were hoping for at all. Matt Hasley, 6 and 7. Joe McCann, 5 and 9. I mean, I could have stuck with what I had, to be honest. It wasn't a big upgrade. The rest of it stays exactly the same. McConaughey, our reserves manager, is now a crucial part of our coaching team. He's developing nicely and he's really helping us out on a training ground. So a big man for us. He stays for another year. So after all of the hassle, we did get that done. The chairperson got re-elected, so there was no change on the boardroom front. But let's go and have a look at what happened in the transfer window because a lot of it's happened later than I would like. We're still desperately trying to beef out the squad. But I think, despite not getting what we wanted, we've got a competitive 11. Competitive big squad, I don't know. The Cups might be a disappointment, but the 11's all right. Let's see what I mean. So we've got a few begs to Linfield at the moment. Lots of them wanted by other clubs and probably bigger reputation than us. So I'm not sure any of them will come off. But if we start with the release players, let's have a look at who's gone out. 
So officially, no one has been released by the club in the last season. What we're going to have a look at, though, is all the transfers out, because there are plenty of players who left and plenty of loan deals that ended as well. So if we look at the transfers out for last season, a couple from the youth team went to Ards Rangers at the end of the year, but nothing drastic, nothing that worried us too much. This season, the couple that have gone, one of them did worry us, because Ethan Warnock went before we could find a left back. It's been solved later on. But that was a big scare for me. He's another one of those, and I've talked about it already. Good job we got promoted, because he's one of those amateur players who was playing for free. We cannot replace them for nothing in the squad. So Ethan Warnock has gone out to our mark. He's a good signing for them, but for us, it was a big concern. So a decent left back, a really good servant, was captain as well. Really good influence in the dressing room, was the most influential player in the club dynamic screen. But he leaves the club, as does Owen McCall. He goes to Institute, where a couple of players were picked out for us, but they were far too good for us to sign. Either way, though, that one's not a disaster, because we talked about maybe giving him up. Lots of players in there, as you can see. We'll get through all of those in a minute, but let's look at the loan deals as well, because a few of them have gone back to their clubs. Keelan Reed, we could not renew. Going back even further, Jaden Withers, we couldn't renew. He's available on a free, but he wants to be our highest paid player. And I've managed to get a decent low knee, so that ain't going to happen. I tried to get Leon Boyd back. I know he's been away a year. Couldn't get it done. And also, looking at renewing McCormick and Core due to their contractual situations, just not possible. So the only player from that list who's come back is Diego McGann. It's on different terms. We'll have a look at why in a moment. But let's start getting to all the ins, because there's quite a few to get through. There was some late panic in the transfer window. But I think we're competitive. You can tell me in a minute if you agree. So let's go back to the end of last season and look at the first one in this summer. And it is the man we just mentioned, Diego McGann. He was released on a free by Linfield after returning from his loan with us. He's okay. He's versatile. He's two and a half star ability, big potential that he'll probably never reach. But he's just a good player to have on the bench. And when we were starting to lose players like Warnock and even some of the loan players who went back, I started to think, who can we get in to fill the bench for cheap? And this man filled that category massively. Because if we go and look at his contract, he's got an unused sub fee of £6 and an appearance fee of £15. So the most he is going to cost us in a game, if we keep a clean sheet, is seventeen quid. That's not bad. I'm really pleased to get him in. And as a squad player, I mean, he's a great option to have because he can play all the way through the spine of that team. And he just gives us an option in the cups, in those sort of competitions we're not expected to win. And if we get three or four games a week and any fixture pile up, it's a good player to have. So that was just a little squad addition. There's one more of those as we go down. But here on this screen, we've got one gem that we weren't looking for and then three results of recruitment focuses. So let's have a look at them in order. The first one is Chris Johnston. Now, when Jaden Withers was given his wage demands, I panicked on the left wing. This guy was the first result of our first recruitment focus of the summer. And the new scouts probably deserve a pat on the back because Chris Johnston from Glenarvan on loan, no wage contribution, 18 years of age, not the best personality, but otherwise pretty good, I would say. Decent off the ball, good crosser, very similar stats to Jaden Withers. And to be honest, for the pace, the natural fitness and the technical ability that's okay too, I don't think we can have any complaints. He's probably where Withers was six months ago. And for that, we've basically got the same player back. So Chris Johnson into the club saves us paying the 180 quid a week Jaden Withers wanted. The second one was the squad depth. I don't know how to pronounce his first name. I could call him PT Joe, but let's go with Andala. He is a right back at 20 years of age from the Republic of Ireland. He has been at Shelbourne and was released in the summer. He's an okay player. In fact, he was released earlier because it says 2023. He must have gone at the end of December. The thing I liked about him, as well as having better stats than most of the others we looked at, is that he's six foot three and he's got a big jump in reach. He can also cover centre mid and centre half. Gives us that option in the squad again like McGann. And similarly to him, very low fees. 20 for appearances, three for a new sub, two for a clean sheet. Again, it's a no-brainer. We just wanted to fill the squad and have some options. As it is at the moment, we've not been able to get Bobby Harvey back at all. He's not wanted to be loaned out by Lahn. We've struggled with people like Leon Boyd. So, as it looks at the minute, McGill is going to be right back still. A model citizen centre-half. And then Andala will just be the backup option. Because we couldn't get McCormick back either from Linfield. 
So a decent player, cheap deal, decent potential. We'll see if anything comes of it. If not, it'll just be released when we get a replacement. The third one is the master stroke from the scouting team because this isn't a position we put a recruitment focus on. We were happy with what we got because the one loan we could renew was Craig Farquhar and he gave us a solid option in centre-half positions. We've got Ryan McGiven, we had McGill, but this guy just makes it a little bit easier. Kofi Orching comes in from Limavadi United, the side that were bottom of the third tier. They have gone down, in fact, to the fourth now. So let's have a look at him, because at 18, he is a superstar. There are some problems. Not the quickest and slightly aggressive. Might be a bad combination. But otherwise, Northern Irish under-19 international, good determination, good jumping reach, good in the air, pretty good with natural fitness for playing two games a week, something Farquhar's awful at, over 50 senior appearances already, played in the under-19 championship qualifiers. I mean, we could not ask for better, really. And what's best about him is he is one of a few new signings that we have got on part-time contracts. So if a club comes in for him, they've got to pay and they've got to give us a sell-on clause or I ain't selling. So he is someone we might make some money on in the future. Basically reminds me of the Bobby Harvey signing, but he's the Bobby Harvey of this summer instead. Good centre-half will be a regular starter. 45 quid a week. I know he's got a little appearance fee as well, but again, we're talking 50, 60 quid a week for this lad. It's a steal. At a slightly different end of the experience scale, we've got Mark Edgar. By August, we were getting a bit desperate. Left back, right wing, we hadn't covered. So these two have been fixed late on. Moyola Park, a club that we went to in the summer for Mikey Place, scouted the team to try and find someone. He wasn't interested at all for some reason. And I really don't understand it because he rejected us to go there, which is fair enough. He's getting a good appearance fee, whatever. But to not even discuss terms when we're in a higher division, that seemed very odd. The squad isn't strong enough to play at a level matching my ambitions. And Moyola Parks is? I don't know. Very, very strange. We'll keep an eye on that one. And of course, we bought in a loan on the right wing anyway, so he could come in later on. But Mark Edgar is the man we did end up signing from Moyola Park. Came up in our recruitment focus at left back alongside a few others, but basically he was the only affordable one. So he is a 27-year-old Northern Irish left back bit run of the mill, nothing spectacular, but also nothing poor. Good personality, fairly determined. The positioning's my one slight worry. You know how I feel about defenders with poor positioning. But with Ryan McGiven now in his mid-30s and being covering at centre-half, I felt like we had to have a proper first choice. And Edgar, to be fair to him, experience at Coleraine, at Port Stewart, at Miola Park, he's just a solid pro, and that's what I needed. So he comes in, he'll be our left back for a year. Again, 45 quid a week's nothing, is it? So a really good deal. Hopefully he'll do all right for us. But if not, his wage is good enough that he can be a backup too. And then the final one came four days ago. And it might be the steal of the summer. Maybe not better than Orchin for the long term. But for this season, Chris Latifa, director of football from Bohemians, you take a bow because you found this guy and he's a superstar. We were going to go into it with Matthew Buchanan, our youth player. But we found some gold dust and look at him. Great dribbler, brilliant fitness, good pace, brilliant off the ball, determined. He's got the lot, even works hard. I mean, he is a fabulous winger at this level. Played some games for Bohemians as well. And on a season-long loan with no contributions, we could not have got a better player than that. And with him added to the squad and that 11 now pieced together, I feel that we should stay up. Whether we win the league or go anywhere near the top half, I don't know. But I think we'll be all right. Let's go and test that theory by looking at the season preview via the squad screen. Because I just want to show you which players we have managed to get tied down. And luckily, it's all of the five we said at the start of the season, basically. Daniel McGill, 60 quid a week. Farquhar obviously stayed on loan again. Levinston, Chambers and Mark McKee. Lower wage demands than Connor Mitchell. The only one on three figures is Jordan Jenkins. Got injured literally the day after and will miss this game too. But he is going to be a good player for us this year. And I trust that. So what it does mean is without getting the big squad depth we were hoping for, without getting loads of additions, we have now got Marty Bell, who's going to start today, a 15-year-old youth team player. Matthew Buchanan is part of the bench. Colin Robinson, part of the bench. Also part of the squad, Andrew Miller, the number 10, who's really come on leaps and bounds at the end of last year. And the other one we got on a contract now is Neil Graham as well. Ended his unhappiness last week, 
and he will be our permanent keeper in case anything goes wrong with Mitchell. But let me know what you think of that. We have taken some gambles, of course. We've got Connor Mitchell here, still on non-contract terms. We've still got the likes of Ryan McGiven on non-contracts too. But I didn't want to take the gamble. Big wages for players that were experienced going downhill and maybe weren't going to be here for the long term. So I think we've got the spine wrapped up. I think we're comfortable this year. And as you can see, I've not come up and changed the whole team. I've fixed areas that had to be. Otherwise, we've largely stuck with the spine that got us promoted. McGill and Farquhar at the back, Mitchell behind them, Levinston, Chambers, McKee as the midfield three, and it will be Jordan Jenkins up front. So that spine is unchanged. It's just a couple of necessary additions. And as a result of all of that, the media expect us to be eighth. I would take that happily. So Annie United, the side we're playing today, one of the few expected below us. Welder's favourite for relegation. We'll keep an eye on that. Institute down there, which seems odd because they've got a very decent team. McCall's obviously gone there as well. They're a solid squad. I wouldn't expect them to be that low down there. But let's go and see how this pans out. The media, they were right when they predicted us mid-table the first year. They were right when they predicted us for the title the second year. How are we going to be? If they're right again, I am very happy to be eighth. We're not going to compete with Balamina. We probably won't compete with relegated Bellina Millard. We probably won't compete with Nuri or Ards. If we can be in that mix underneath, I'll be a happy man. Let's go and get into the first one. There's no changes to the tactics this season. Distillery v Anar, one of the few games we should be winning. Now let's go and see the 11 I've picked and get into our opening game in the championship. And I know you've had a sneak preview of it already when looking at the contracts, but this is what we've gone for. Mitchell stays in goal. McGill is happy to play right back. We've not been able to get anyone in there. Farquhar and Orchin, the new signing at centre halves. Edgar over at left back. Levinston, Chambers, and McKee remain the midfield central three. New wingers on loan in Latifa and in Johnston as well. And then Marty Bell covering for the injured Jenkins up front. And again, one of the things I'm proudest of. We're not relying on loan players, which I thought we might have to be. We've still got some wage budget if a star does pop up. We've only got three loan players in the entire squad. And yes, there might be one or two Linfield ones to pad that out. But overall, I'm thrilled with what we've put together. A few youngsters on the bench. I'm leaving the likes of McGiven out because of the big appearance fee. And then if he needs to play, it'll be a game from the start. But on the bench, the likes of Colin Robinson, Matthew Buchanan, and then some of the players that are playing for free still. Josh Lynch still at the club. McVarnock and Shearer also. Shearer's rejected tons of moves away. So let's go and get into it. The same tactic, largely the same team that got us promoted. Can they deliver? They expect to avoid relegation. The board expect the same. The media expect the same. But can we do it on the pitch? That's the big question that's left. Lots of players in for Annie United and a few worries for me. They've got a lot of former Balamina players. The likes of McCulloch, the skipper at left wing back. Kenny Kane up front, another one of those. But also... At right wing back, they've got Reese Glendinning, who was our first right back of choice. Rejected us, wanted too much money. So they've obviously got a bigger budget than us. It's something we'll look at at the end of the window. For now though, loads of new signings for them. So let's go and get through to kickoff and hope that we can deliver a good performance. As we've got an early free kick with McKee. A lot of work as always on set pieces. And Orchin heads just over the bar. I'm really not sure why there's less fans in for this. It does seem a little bit odd. But with five minutes gone, it's nil-nil. First chance goes to us, and it's free kicks galore. We seem to be creating chances. We seem to be having the territory. As McKee takes it just over again. Rippled the roof of the net on its way over. It's a good start, but we've got to make it count. Still no shot on target. Well, 28 minutes gone. I'm not really sure what to make of it, because it has quietened down now. And of course, we are missing our main goal scorer, Marty Bell. I know he scored on his debut, but he got injured and he hasn't played since, so we don't really know how good he is. He's a decent finisher, physically maybe not yet up to scratch, as Mitchell throws out to Edgar, the new boy at left back. Down the line to Johnston, a fellow signing. What can he do? Will he carry it? No, he gives it straight away. McCulloch nicks it to Campbell. Not sure what he's doing on the right-hand side, to be honest. As it's back to Crown, long over the top towards Rui, who was their star man, Farquhar away as far as McGill. Only straight back to him, though. Long ball forward towards Bell, never getting there. McKee can't make anything of it. It falls for Kane, Levinston chasing, can't do enough. Over the top from Crown, Mullins in. Mitchell to the rescue, is he? No. 1-0 Annie United. Problems early in the season. It's been an okay start, but the first time they've got in behind, we're in big trouble. 1-0 to the visitors. 
while approaching half time, no home side to win in actually across the whole division. It's not been a great half. I mean, they've only had one shot. We've had seven, one on target. There's a few nerves. We've got loads of younger players about, and that might be the issue this season. But overall, not the worst performance. I think I'm going to go positive. I'm going to try and push them a little bit. But looking at the performances so far, it's a big trouble for the home sides as McGill plays down the line to Latifa. We need a bit of a reaction from these wingers. McGill gets it again to Farquhar, into Chambers, who missed the header for the goal apparently. Great switch a play there for Johnston though. McKee's attacking the box, as is Levinston, and the header's tipped onto the bar. It's brilliant goalkeeping, and it's clear to the right wing. We can't make it count. We've been the better side without creating anything too clear cut. We're not doing enough now as McCulloch into the box. Good challenge from Orchin. Aggressive in the box is not normally a good combo, but he gets away with that one and carries it too. What a through ball as well. Bell plays a 1-2 with McKee, and that is a stunning save by the keeper. The flag was up as it happens, but stunning work. 1-0 it stays. What on earth do we do? McKee's put another free kick over. I'm going to have to think about changes because at the moment we're creating, but we're not really doing enough. So as we get to 15, 20 minutes to go, that's maybe where we have to pull the trigger as it's a clearance downfield from Anna. Lucky deflection. Finds McCulloch in the middle. Goes back to his centre half, his namesake as well. Long ball over the top towards Mullen, the scorer. Mitchell's caught in no man's land. That is not a sweeper keeper. Back to Rui. Two shots on target, two goals. It's unlucky, isn't it? One of those things, we lose 2-0 at the minute. But can we get players on to change the game? We're going to go attacking. We're going to go for it. Who can come on? McVarnock, number 10. Chambers off in the holding role. I'm going to stick experience for now. Lynch there. I'm going to take Orchin off, who's knackered and looking aggressive. I think any games he's not on a yellow, it might be wise to take him off. Up front, Marty Bell will come off for Jordan Shearer. And maybe one of the youth players? Not yet. Four changes made. We'll be back to it in five minutes. Well, this does risk getting away from us now as we go a little bit too attacking, perhaps. It's cleared away as far as Shearer, though, and if we score one, it will be game changed. Latifah's running beyond him. Come on, you've got more pace than that. Go for it. McGill gives it to Levinston, and Lynch picks it up in the middle. Through ball to McVarnock. Was good in the third tier, and he's doing the same off the bench in the second. These are players, Lynch and McVarnock, that are only here because they're playing for free. They're not good enough for this level, but my words are they making an impact. Latifa will come off on his debut. On the right wing, we'll go for Matthew Buchanan. And with 10 to go, we've got a bit more familiarity on, and we've dominated the game. While I'm upset that we're losing, I cannot complain at the performance, because we've been excellent. Let's demand a little bit more. If we play like this most games, once we've got Jenkins back, our goal scorer, I think we'll win more than we lose. The problem is, without our star striker, we have very little goal threat. And we've just found that out today. 16 shots, 7 on target, not even one expected goal, and only one actual goal. And we relied on a sub running in behind. If we get Jordan Jenkins on the end of some of these, I think we win a few games. But at the moment, we've played the weakest side on paper, and we've not come out with any points. Well, no home wins. What a weird start. But look at the positives. We got all the debuts out the way. We played really well. We're just missing our top scorer, and it showed. I'm just having a look at when deadline day is. It can't be the Saturday, can it? It is. So we're going to have to show Bellina Millard. I was going to show Balamina. If it's going to be a busy day, we'll show just the Bellina Millard game and focus on deadline day. If it's going to be quiet, we'll show both fixtures and we'll show what transfer action's been done. I'm hoping we can nick at a couple of loanies from Linfield, maybe find another striker that can compete. Or do we wait for a youth player to get to the level? I don't know. Jordan Jenkins should be back by then. So if we play the same, I fancy a result. But let me know what you think on paper of our summer work on the pitch, off the pitch in the backroom team. And what did you think of the performance? Because I'm not too disheartened. I just think we struggle for goals without Jordan Jenkins. That's why we brought him in in the first place. He wrapped us up the title last year. And hopefully he'll wrap up survival for us here. If you did enjoy it though, please do put a thumbs up on the video. We will be back to one video a day from tomorrow. So 3.30, this one will be out. The head coach, of course, later today, but then on Wednesday. And then the two will rotate each day after that. Thank you very much for the incredible support with it so far. If you want to stay up to date, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. I'll see you tomorrow for our first afternoon episode. Mm -hmm.